Remember the Sony Open of 2023? The big names, the nail-biting finishes, the kind of golf that keeps you glued to your seat. Fast forward to 2024, and it's like we've stepped into a different world. This year's Sony Open, let's just say it was unique. Why? Well, let's just say this year's event had some questionable players on the roster, except for maybe a few like Grayson Murray, Keegan Bradley, and of course, Gary Woodland. If it weren't for these guys, the 2024 Sony Open might have been more of a quiet round at the local club than a headline event. While many questions were going into this year's tournament, the major one was centered around none other than Gary Woodland, the guy with a swing so smooth it could make a morning coffee jealous. Coming back from brain surgery, he was the headliner in a band of misfits. So what happened at this year's Sony Open? Was it a glimpse into a new era of golf or just a one-off year where the big names decided to hit snooze? Today on Good Bogey Golf, we will do a recap of the 2024 Sony Open, covering the major players, the winners, and the runners-up, and of course, the key moments throughout the four-day event. First off, we need to talk about Gary Woodland's return to the greens. It was the kind of moment that makes you remember why we love sports. Just months after brain surgery, here was a guy who wasn't just battling the course, but his own recent history. Woodland, with what some call the best stinger in the world, sorry Tiger fanboys, stepped onto the course with something to prove. Not to the world, but to himself. The former US Open champ brought a glimmer of that old prestige back to the tournament. But golf, as it often does, had other plans. Woodland carded a two over, missing the cut, ending his comeback abruptly. While it was sad to see as he walked off the course, there was no mistaking the emotion in his stride. This wasn't the return he might have dreamed of, but in many ways, it was something more. It was a step, a swing, a moment of truth in a journey that was far from over. And Gary Woodland's score at the Sony Open might read as a miss, but for those who understand the game, it was a clear message. I'll be back. I'll be back. Now, let's talk about some notable players who did make the cut. Take Stuart Sink, for instance. You might say he's as seasoned as they come, with a hat tan line so distinct it could have its own fan club. Watching Sink on the course was like stepping into a time machine, only this machine was set to golfing wisdom mode. And then there was Charlie Hoffman. If golf swings were movie scenes, Hoffman's would be a blockbuster hit complete with what looked like Gary Busey's dramatic expressions. Every post-swing face and body movement was a story in itself, almost Tourette-like in its intensity. You couldn't help but watch, partly in awe, partly wondering what the next swing would bring. Among these familiar faces, there was a moment where you'd be forgiven for thinking you'd time-traveled. Emiliano Grillo made an appearance, and for a second, it felt like we were back in 2017. Grillo, moving through the course, seemed to echo a time when his name was on everyone's lips. But as these veterans made their presence felt, a question hung in the air. Was this the Sony Open, a glimpse into the PGA's future? A future where the fields might not always sparkle with the biggest stars, where top pros might be more engaged in other leagues or even the NFL playoffs. It was hard not to wonder, especially when you saw the likes of Chris Kirk, the plantation winner whose performance this time seemed to get worse with more swings. And let's not forget Joel Damon, the full swing darling who's just like us. Well, if us means accidentally moving the cut line with a missed putt. In a way, he was helping out the bros, making the cut a bit more reachable for the rest of the field. Thanks for making the Sony interesting, Joel. But as the 2024 Sony Open unfolded, it's clear that this year's tournament was a departure from the past. Players like Keegan Bradley, Cam Davis, and Sahith Tigala, who had shown flashes of brilliance in the past, were now in the spotlight. Still, their performances didn't quite capture the magic of previous tournaments except for one. Bradley posted a 17-under and held his own in the playoff round, which we will get into in a few here. But Davis and Tigala, both capable of dazzling displays, couldn't quite elevate the tournament to its former glory. Davis scored a 9-under and finished tied 30th. Tigala, on the other hand, posted a score of just 1-under and was cut. So what made the Sony Open worth watching this year? Well, outside of Gary Woodland's return, there was an exciting playoff round finish. In the end, there was a three-way tie between Keegan Bradley, Byung Hun An, and Grayson Murray. Byung Hun An played steadily throughout, barely missing the mark. Keegan Bradley had some notable performances throughout the rounds as well, posting a 63 in round three, which helped him secure the playoff round. But ultimately, it was Grayson Murray's time to shine 
whose script for the tournament seemed to be written in the stars. On the first playoff hole, Murray was in a bad position, almost 40 feet from the hole, while both Byung Hun An and Grayson Murray were a few feet within the hole. Both were positioned to birdie. So what did Murray do? He sank a 39 put for birdie, a Tiger-esque highlight. Then, when neither Byung Hun An nor Bradley converted their birdie punts, Murray was a champion again on the PGA Tour for the first time in six years. It was a moment of pure cinematic magic. But what made this win even more special was Murray's life-changing events that preceded the event. Murray, who experienced significant struggles with alcohol use prior, had a life-changing incident at the Mexico Open in 2017 that led to a severe anxiety attack for four days straight. He stated, I did not want to go through that ever again, and that was the last time I had a drink. I would have rather been dead those four days. I just kind of locked myself in my room and didn't tell my parents or anything. It was bad. It was really bad. This marked the last time he drank alcohol. His path to recovery included a stint at Hazelden Betty Ford and working with a fear management expert. So after Murray's victory at the Sony Open, he acknowledged this was not just a professional victory, but a personal growth and commitment to sobriety. Murray's victory was the plot twist the Sony Open needed. In a tournament that had been lacking its usual depth, his win was a reminder that in golf, as in the best stories, anything can happen. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, check out our other videos. And that's another round of Good Bogey Golf, golf for busy people, where we've got your back, keeping you in the loop no matter how tight your schedule is. Don't forget to swing that like button, share this video with your fellow golf enthusiasts, and subscribe to our channel for your quick and easy golf updates. Remember, time may be short, but the game is long. Stay ahead of the curve with Good Bogey Golf. Thanks for watching, keep your eye on the ball, and we'll see you next time.